Hi guys. My name is Abhishek. I love to do portraits and custom calligraphy tattoos. I have dedicated the past 2 years of my career towards practicing calligraphy and portraits specifically. Now this video is about the basics of calligraphy and about how do I approach the designing of a calligraphy. Calligraphy is the art of beautiful handwriting. You can start practicing the same with the techniques in this video. So basically, I follow a four line method. It involves making four parallel lines. I have taken a scale or a ruler and I'm now marking four dots at both of the end of the pages. Now, I'll be taking a straight line between the dots so I get four parallel lines. I have to ensure that the lines have to be parallel to each other. The first line is called as the ascender line. The second one is called as the mean line. The third one is the base line and the fourth one is the descender line. Here I have a stencil guide. This guide helps me to give a 45 degree angle to all my parallel lines. A 45 degree angle is very good for calligraphy. It gives us the symmetry between the alphabets. This angle has to be a 45 degree so there's a regular flow of the alphabets. Here I have a pre-made sheet of the guidelines. You can download it from the description box given below. This one is a dark one. The opacity of this one is 100. You can also do it with a lighter opacity. Here I have another one that is a lighter opacity one. I prefer to use a lighter one that allows me to see the alphabets in a more clearer way. You can download these from the description box. This will help you to practice calligraphy. Now the pencils are used for calligraphy. I use two options. The first one is I make a rough sketch with a 6 edge or a 5 edge pencil. This gives me the option to do it light and then I darken it up with a 4B pencil. I also have an option of making the calligraphy with a colored pencil. With the pressure of a colored pencil, I can ensure that the color is light purple or a dark purple to finish the calligraphy. The main body of the alphabet should lie between the mean and the base line. This will ensure that the alphabets are of a fixed width. Now I'm roughly sketching the alphabet A in a capital letter with my 5 edge pencil. I always ensure that the first time I'm sketching something is to be light so if in case of errors I can always rectify it. Then I come back with a 4B pencil to do a semi-finished kind of a look. Again this is not the final product. The final product will be always with a micron pen. A micron pen is a fiber tip pen that will give me a finished look. Now the alphabets like A, H and K. The top of these alphabets should be always not above the ascender line. We have to be careful for the alphabets like G, Y, etc. The bottom of these alphabets should not go below the descender line. I'm using a colored pencil now. So with the pressure of my pencil, I can always go light and dark. There are four main points that are to be kept into consideration to ensure a beautiful calligraphy. Number one, the alphabet spacing is very important. Here 
I have drawn a couple of alphabets. If you notice, the spacing between the alphabets have to be the same. This will give a very good symmetry to the alphabets. The top of all the alphabets should not go above the ascender line and the bottom should not go beyond the descender line. Coming to the second point, the curves of the ovals and the angles of the edges should be in symmetry. Here I have drawn a couple of eyes. Now I'm demonstrating a D and a G. Now if you see, the D is more like a circle and the G is more like an oval. I have to ensure that they have to be the same. The height of these should be the same and the body should also lie not beyond the mean line. Coming to point number 3. The line weightage and thickness. The more the same, the better it is. Now if you see, I have drawn A a bit thin and C a bit thick. It won't look nice. To ensure the same, the weightage of the line should be the same. If we will follow these rules, we will surely get a beautiful and a symmetrical calligraphy. Coming to the next point, point number 4. Filigree and flourishing are good, but not to be done more than required. Here I am now making filigree. Filigree is an ornamental drawing that is done below or above the alphabet. The thing that is joined with the alphabet is called as a flourishing. We can flourish our alphabet to make it look more beautiful. If we draw something for the entire word, it will be called as filigree. Now if you see in this word calligraphy, I have not done any filigree, they are only flourishings. If I would have done anything below it, it would be called as a filigree. It was not required. There are some techniques you can follow for a good hand movement to train your muscle to do a good calligraphy. Here I'm drawing some E loops. You just have to make sure that you draw consistent loops. You have to ensure that the angles of the loops are the same, the same as 45 degree and the spacing between the alphabets should be the same. The height of it should not extend beyond the mean line. The second thing you can practice is some O's. Just make sure that the width and the spacing between them has to be the same. The more you practice, the better you can get. Another thing you can practice is some I curves. This will ensure that you get a straight line whenever you are making a line in an H a D or a B. The spacing should be the same. Just ensure that there is a 45 degree curve and all the angles at the end are the same. You can also try making some tornadoes so your hand practices to do curves. The last thing I can suggest you is to make some S curves. These are like infinity knots. This is also to train your hand and the muscle. Everything comes with the practice. Just make sure you don't go beyond the lines. The size of the loops also should be the same. Everything combined together will help you to have a good calligraphy. Here is the time lapse of a simple text I'll be writing as stay safe. I'm doing it with a dark purple color pencil. Just the hand pressure is a bit less so I just lay out the sketch and then now I'm putting a bit more pressure on the pencil so I get a darker look.
I hope you enjoyed the video and gained some knowledge through it. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like the video. Do share if you like it.